Today on Bad LSX Garage, I'm going to show you guys how to marinate a turkey. No, that's not at all what's going to happen, so I guess you need to stay tuned. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> happening family friends loved ones welcome back to the compound this is bad lsx garage and i'm chris for all you new people that's stopping by to see what's going on here well look we do a little bit of everything here it's cars trucks motorcycles it seems to be a lot more motorcycles than anything but it is what it is we do vacations we do reviews we do how to's listen it's all across the board but it is a little more motorcycle oriented i would say but that's fine guys you know we've all got one certain hobby that we love more than the others as you can see behind me there's a 2008 corvette that's my you know dream car it's got a little bit of stuff done to it if you want to see more about that it's on in the playlist if you want to know or see more about that car put it down in the comment section we'll do more with it but today no, I'm not gonna cook a turkey. This isn't a, a cooking show. That's one thing that, no. I'm not a cooker. I'm, I'm not very good at cooking. I, I do enough, well, I do enough to get by. Let's, let's put it that way. The wife's the cooker, and so is, you know, Wendy's and Arby's and, and Cracker Barrel. No, I'm just joking. We quit a lot of that eating out stuff. It costs, guys. But that's a story for another day. Anyways, today we're going to be changing oil on this 2011 Street Glide. Well, you're saying, what? Why? Why you got a cause? That's what we're going to drain it in. If you know anything about these bikes, they're sitting low as it is, and you cannot stick a conventional pan underneath these bikes. They won't fit. But these, however, are perfect. My suggestion is go in your wife's kitchen, get under the counter, and get one now. Well, I mean, if she's got an extra, yes. But if she doesn't, you may want to ask her first or go to your local store and pick up one. But you also see Lucas Oil here and you're thinking, why, what, what are you doing? Why Lucas Oil? Listen, nothing against Harley Davidson Oil. I believe it is a decent oil. To me, these twin cams are noisy. And if you do any kind of upgrade work, cam, whatever, they get more pronounced. It, it ticks louder. It's just, it's irritating to me. So I'm trying to find the perfect blend. I'm trying to find the perfect oil that will lower that sound, still keep my engine cool, keep everything going the way it should. Now, oil is oil usually. If you use the correct oil, if you use any kind of oil, it doesn't matter, just as long as it's lubricated. But yes, there are different blends and stuff out there. Now, I did start out with just a regular Harley Davidson full synthetic oil. Like I said, to me, the sound was more pronounced. I went to their oil with a smidge of Lucas, you know, the, the thick stuff, the stuff it looks like peanut butter trying to squeeze out of honey. It, it, no, that didn't help. I mean, it did a little bit, but it's still, once that Lucas broke down a little bit, you could hear it come back. Then I went to Castor Oil GTX. And now this is all 2050, guys. This is nothing, nothing different. Went to Castor Oil 2050. I seem to be liking it a little bit, but I'm still searching. It's, it's up there. I'm going to say it's up there, but right now I'm still searching. If I have tried the mobile, was it a mobile one for the V-Twin, the 2050, and it's kind of, it's kind of right there with Harley Davidson Oil. They're about neck and neck, honestly. Actually today, seen the Lucas, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna try that. Let's see what that does. So I got four quarts. I'm gonna stop it at three. We're gonna check it from there and then add as we need to. I'd like to be two dots down on the stick, but that's we'll get to that shortly. Right now, what we have here, I've got a pan, four quarts of oil, Harley Davidson oil filter. It is black. I did not get chrome this time. Chrome don't get you home, guys. It looks good, but I mean, it's hid down there anyway, and you can't see it, so. Funnel, oil filter, T. 
takeoff tool. I have an extension, 5 8 socket with the ratchet. What I like to do is I like to lay something down because I don't want to ruin my garage floor. There's many different things that you can actually put underneath that oil filter to keep it from leaking out on your floor, but I'm doing it the basic way. And guys, now listen, go to the adult section, pick you up some of these dry washcloths. I promise you these will be your best friend. They're cheap and you can use them. They keep oil off your ground and honestly, they are sturdy as I lay these underneath. Anywhere that I feel that that oil is gonna drain or drop on the ground, I'm gonna put it down. So that's what we do first and foremost. Now, if you've got a different way of doing it, that's fine. Put it down in the comment section. We can have a little discussion about this. What do you guys do? What do you guys put down here? Now, let's go to the other side. Okay, guys, we're on the right side of the motorcycle. That's actually the part, you know, with the tubes and with the air filter, you know, all of this stuff. Or if you're used to riding in a car all the time, this would be the passenger side. So what we want to do is loosen this oil cap. Now, keep in mind, this is an oil cap, and this is for your transmission fluid. This does not need to be removed right now unless you're actually changing your transmission fluid, but this video is not a how-to on transmission. It's a how-to on oil changes. So this right here is what you want to unloosen. Then you want to just leave it hanging like that. And what that does is it releases that vacuum. So when you loosen your bolt at the bottom to drain your oil, everything will go evenly and quickly down in that pan. We're back on the left side of the bike. Take your pan, stick it underneath the bike so you can get to it. Demonstration purposes, I'm going to have to remove this just out of the way so I can get the camera in this section so you can see. Okay, now that we're underneath the bike, you can see there's one here, a bolt, uh, bolt here. A we bolt are going here. after this one right here. So take your 5 eighths and break that loose. Once it's broke loose, just casually, don't bring it all the way out, but just casually loosen it. Once you feel like it's loose enough that you can turn it with your fingers, then bring your pan to you and start letting it drain. Pan is underneath the bike. I'm loosing the bolt with my finger and now I'm draining. It doesn't look really bad. In all honesty, uh, I'm a little bit over, not a whole lot, but a little bit and it's really really clean so i would have to give castor oil gtx a a plus for that for sure because it's it's clean clean oil and uh the next process you want to do is while that's draining everything's going get your drain plug and look at it really really good make sure there's no kind of metal shavings because right here on this top right here is actually a magnet. And if there's any metal shavings that comes off of this motor or out of this motor, it goes straight to that oil pan. And well, we all know what a magnet does to any kind of metal, it attracts it. So all your metal shavings should be right here. And it looks like as if we are good, there's nothing there. Wipe that off really well. And also, there's an oil ring right here. It's a, it's a rubber O-ring. Typically when you buy the oil change kit from Harley, they will ask you for the O-ring if you need one. Yes, pick up one. This one, I just replaced the last oil change, so I usually don't replace it every oil change. I usually do every other. So the next time I do an oil change, I will replace this ring. Let's take off our oil filter. We've got our cap over it over the oil filter we've got a pretty long extension going on with our ratchet so just a little bit just turn now they do make special wrenches for this 
you don't have to have just their special wrench all the time it does help i'm not gonna not gonna lie to you guys it does help but if you have any kind of regular tools for oil changes they will work just the same Maybe be a little aggravating to get in and out but i use the cup it's a 76-14 so now keep in mind it's going to make a little bit of a mess but I do have those towels down there, so it will be what it's going to be. Make sure to hold your oil filter up, because obviously if you point it downwards, all that oil is going to go straight down, so oil filter is out. Now, it is draining. You can see it, but it's leaking right straight down. I'll show you just in a second how to fix that. A little bit of brake clean. Spray it down in the affected area where everything is oily, and that brake, this brake clean will actually drain everything down and you can wipe it up and there's no resin filter get you some oil a lot of people use used oil i prefer new and what i like to do is lubricate that ring and make sure that that ring right here is on that other old filter the old old filter that you just took off make sure it's on there if it's not it's still on the engine block of no matter what it is if it's a motorcycle car or truck whatever make sure that that old o-ring is still on that old filter because if you double these up you're going to have a major issue the oil is going to squirt everywhere it's just going to be a big mess and you could possibly blow up whatever it is that you're changing oil in so make sure okay now that i've got that lubricated a little bit i do add a little bit of oil some people do some people don't down in there is where you want to pour your oil and people do it because dry start that's the main reason why i do it i like to have a little oil in this filter so there is no kind of dry start everything's run smooth I'm sure it's probably not going to hurt anything as long as it takes for these to actually build oil pressure But that's beside the point. That's it's for my peace of mind pretty much. So I do add oil I don't fill it all the way up typically About right there. That's that's plenty Now I'll set this to the side so I know to use it first and now let's get this oil filter on. Now, if you had that oil filter full, it would already be leaking everywhere. This right here is where everybody struggles. Guys, you don't have to go He-Man on these. Put them in there, tighten them down. You don't want to go super He-Man on them, but you want to get them snug. You should be able to just snug them up by hand. You shouldn't have to actually put any kind of tool on this. So right like that. Okay, let's put our drain plug back in. It will be the reverse process of the way it was when we took it out. First look, you've got a little dribble going on. So to me, that looks, that looks good. There's not, yeah, I believe we're good. So I'm going to reach in here. And put my plug back in. When I get it to where I'm pretty sure I'm going to be okay. Not make a big mess. I am going to slide this oil out of here. Sweet tighten this bolt up in there again it doesn't have to be he-man guys snug it i'm not sure the actual foot pounds and all that you'll have to look in the owner's manual for that but either way just snug it ain't got to be stupid tight plenty perfect now take your rag wipe any excess dribble and drops and all that good stuff up remove the cap 
place it on something, set it to the side. Put your funnel in. Now, remember the first cork that we actually just put in the bike and the oil filter? Well, that's the cork we're gonna put in first. Okay, we got three quarts in, so pull your funnel back out. Try not to make a huge mess. Lay it off to the side. If you're still not done yet, so don't, don't think you're finished. Don't click off the video yet and be like, oh, it's done, that's it. Put the cap on. Don't tighten it snug, but just put it on. Now, what you wanna do is come up, start your bike. You wanna let it run for just a few minutes. It's not gonna hurt it with being a little low on oil, which it probably will be low because it's supposed to take more than three quarts. Start the bike, let it run for, I don't know, a minute, minute and a half. Check for leaks, check for everything, check your oil filter, go around the bike good, look underneath, then come back and recheck. Perfect, got it run, sounds good. Now let's check the oil. Like I said a while ago, a lot of people have a problem with this. They wanna overfill it. And on these twin cams, and I think most Harleys in general, you wanna go about two dots down, typically, from the full mark, because uh, that'll keep you from blowing that oil back out of the filter. Now I'm gonna give it a second to kind of drain back down a little bit. So what, what's that say now? Full hot on Jiffy Stand. That's, that's your first mark right there. Then it says full hot vehicle upright, which would be the bottom one. So I think you guys can see that. So since it's on the Jiffy Stand and it's hot, we want this top mark right here. So I don't know if you can see, but I try to go two to three marks down. So about right where my fingernail is at is where I like to be. So three marks down this way from here. So let's give it a quick check. Yes, screw it all the way in. You won't get an accurate reading if you don't. four marks down so i'll probably add just a i mean just a drop more but that's it you guys see the mark right i don't know if you can actually see that on video or not but it's four marks down so i'm gonna add just to that first mark and i'm gonna call it good so that's the way you want to do it guys you don't want to overfill it i know they call for three and a half some four and I've seen people just uh, load it down. And then they wonder why when they get off the bike that their pants are soaked with oil. Well, that's why, guys, because it's it's actually blowing right back out of that breather and blowing back on your clothes. Let's check it one last time. Perfect. I'm on the three mark right there. 
I hope you guys can see that. Let's move it over just a little bit. You see that? Perfect. That's how much is left. So it, it's right at a half. So that was three and a half quarts. Like I said, some say three and a half, some says 375, some says four. Oil change acquired. It's done, guys. So hopefully that helps somebody out because I know there's a lot of videos already out there about that, I know. But sometimes it helps when it's somebody that you trust, somebody that you actually know and knows what's going on. And hey, look, I love talking to you guys. I love making videos for you guys. And I know a lot of you's probably got a question. Okay, what about the extra oil? What what do we do with that? Well, now we've got a we've got a turkey pan full of used oil. What do we do with it? Well, here's a couple options. If you've got one of those big pans, you can drain it in that, and then when you get it full, you can take it off somewhere, or you can actually dump this into these old that I just emptied out and take them off. Now, where do you take them to? You're like, okay, I, I get that, but now what? What do I take them to? Okay, usually you can go to any auto parts store and they will accept used oil. Or if you've got like a Valvoline, a Penzoil around you, a lot of those places use oil to actually heat their buildings in the wintertime. So take it there, they'll recycle it, you know, and they won't charge you anything. Dump it in their little pit, in their little trough, and hey, rock on, you're done. And they'll appreciate you for it. So that's just a little heads up and a little tip. So I hope that helped you guys out, seriously. Uh, fun little video. I, I enjoy making videos like this. If you enjoy actually watching these kind of videos, Give me a big thumbs up. Put in the comment section, what do you guys use to put underneath your bike? Do you use a special tool for taking your oil filter off? Do you buy the Harley stuff? Or do you just make do with what you got? So anyways, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell everybody. Bad LSX Garage, tell them to come holler at your old boy, Chris. I'd love to have each and every one of you. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you that are here and that have subscribed to this channel. Thank you very much, seriously. So anyways, guys, you know the deal as always. Peace. I'm out. <laughs>